In the heart of the Pacific, the small island nation of Nauru grapples with a growing water scarcity crisis, intensified by climate change. The most vulnerable people face the greatest challenges. In a concerted effort to aid the most vulnerable people, the European Union-funded Global Climate Change Alliance Plus Scaling Up Pacific Adaptation Project has joined forces with the Nauru government and other partners to safeguard the vital water lifeline for selected vulnerable households by providing dedicated storage for desalinated water. The remote island nation of Nauru spans a mere 21 square kilometers, making it the third smallest country in the world. Situated about 42 kilometers south of the equator, and approximately 4,000 kilometers northeast of Australia. In Nauru, droughts have become an all too common reality. With its limited freshwater resources and the exacerbating impacts of climate change, the island faces a growing threat to its inhabitants' well being. The pressing challenges for us right now is the access to water. In Nauru, we only have um, one main source of fresh water, which is our desalination plants but the drought is putting more pressure with delivering of water. Um, our desalination plant is um, working twice as much and with no access to rainwater to um, supplement our use of fresh water, it's becoming a major source of problem for us in our lives. The growing reliance on desalinated water has created a precarious situation for the island's population. The fragile balance between supply and demand is exacerbated during prolonged droughts. The Nauru Utilities Corporation, NUC, strives to meet the ever-growing demand with cutting-edge desalination technology and infrastructure. Yet, limited resources and increasing pressures amplify the struggle for water security. While the National Water and Sanitation Plan for 2015 to 2035 identified desalination as a primary water source for the future, the plan has yet to be implemented, and at present, there is no piped water system. So currently, water is transported by truck from the desalination plant to the individual storage tanks at the houses. Well, as per the, the, the numbers that we, we record on a monthly basis, we we distribute around 23, 23 to 24 milliliters of water monthly. And we produce a little bit more than that, so we, we, we are producing more than distributing. And we cannot really measure the demand because we are still, now, now we are in a dry spell for the last year or two. We are, we are a bit struggling with uh, keeping up with the demand. Like for example, just to give you an idea of what's happening, uh, we receive purchases, purchases of water. Like for example, today I saw this, there was about 120 purchases, and we can only do 80 to 90 a day. So you can see the difference. And this difference accumulates over time, and it becomes a problem because in this period. We are always having customers coming in and you know demanding for 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 a delivery for a service. Of course, we, we acknowledge those kind of complaints and inquiries because if you doing business and you are you provide service, paying customers, you know, paying for something means getting the service. Same time, you know. But we sometimes we have to delay a few days and some customers to receive more. The GCCA Plus Super Project designed criteria for a robust data-driven selection process to identify the most vulnerable households using census data, on-the-ground assessments and other data. This selection process considered factors such as the lack of a household water tank, the number and age of the household occupants, the number of occupants with disabilities, income sources, and the existing water storage arrangements. 
96 households were selected for targeted interventions, which included the provision and full installation of a water storage tank for desalinated water, and the provision of automated water pumps to pipe the water directly into the houses. The list of households was approved by Nauru's cabinet. Paul Dongabir, a devoted 52-year-old single father of four, faced immense challenges in providing clean water for his family in Nauru. Before the intervention of the GCCA Plus Super Project, Paul's daily struggle involved pushing a trolley laden with buckets to the nearest water source. Now, as one of the 96 families selected to receive a water storage tank for desalinated water, Paul's arduous trek for life's most essential resource has become a distant memory. Before I have to use a trolley to get water from here to utility, so I have to take 12 buckets in one trolley. Yeah, that's very hard for us at that time. That route is very, I think, takes a long, long time. We have to ask our neighbors, like it's a small island, so we know each, uh, each other, so we have to ask them for water so we can provide for ourselves. Yeah, lucky for me, I got my water last month, so I never use it for any washing, so we only use it for, because we, we have the old tank. So that's the old tank we use for washing clothes. The new one where we use it for cooking and uh, washing plates, uh, drinking. Yeah. It feels really for my family because it's very helpful to our family, to my family. The GCCA Plus Super Project exemplifies the power of collaboration data-driven decision-making and unwavering determination to combat the challenges of climate change. By utilizing data to carefully identify and support the most vulnerable families, the project exemplifies a people-centered approach to Nauru's water scarcity issues. The number of people living in the is slowly increasing and uh, uh, we need adequate water supply in, to this house to ensure that uh, we, have, uh, we have always on hand. And the, and the donation that we, we get through our government, through the uh, plans, are very appreciative. It is quite helpful to us because family and friends you find a need to, to more water, not only for drinking, eating, preparation of food, but also washing, personal washing, the bigger tanks, I suppose, the, uh, the longer we'll have water to the house. By learning from previous projects in Nauru, the nation can build on successes and lessons learned to create more effective strategies for increasing resilience. Scaling up these efforts allows for a greater number of individuals and communities to benefit from proven solutions, fostering cooperation and empowering people to face the challenges of climate change and water scarcity.